Welcome back everyone. So I've had a slight change of plan regarding the engine. Uh, I was stripping down my 948 block, uh, the engine that came with the car, not the engine that was original to the car, uh, because the engine numbers didn't match, but A948. And I found this engine online just the other day. It's a 1098 from an Austin Healey Sprite. As you can see it has twin carbs, um, but it's a 10cc DAH engine. A uh, particular engine used, I think, in, from 64 to 66 or so in Austin Healey Sprites. Um, and the big thing about this engine is it has larger main bearings. It has a two-inch main bearing, so the bottom end is stronger. And also it comes with the 12G295 head. Um, so a better head, better breathing, slightly larger cubic capacity, stronger bottom end. Um, and um, we're going to give it a go. Let's see what it's like. I don't plan to fully rebuild this. The engine was running. Um, I'm going to do a little bit of uh, examination to see whether anything is, is untoward, but uh, the engine was running. It was putting out 60 PSI, all the pressure, so it should be good. Uh, that's the hope. I need to do something about this exhaust. As you can see, the exhaust is going this way. This is the front of the car. This is the rear of the car in the Morris. Um, this is slanting down this way. It should be slanting that way on a Morris Minor. I'm not sure how to work that. This is a, a wider um, uh, exhaust as well, or exhaust manifold, than the 948. This is the exhaust manifold from a 948, uh, and as you can see, uh, it slopes down that way towards towards the flywheel, whereas the Austin V goes that way. So this will fit a, you know, my standard exhaust, which I bought for the car, so I don't really want to put a new exhaust on. That means either using this one, which is will be slightly restrictive because it's not for a 948, um, or getting a 1098 exhaust that, that will work with the existing exhaust system. So, got a little bit of thinking and planning to do with that. But at the moment, we'll we'll take off the carbs, we'll take off the exhaust. Um, I think we'll take the head off and see what it's like. <laughs> Well, that's quite interesting. Taking the inlet manifold off reveals that uh, this part of the manifold, the exhaust manifold, is broken off. You can see a section is chipped off compared to this side. So this exhaust manifold is uh, it's not going to work anyway. There's a lot of rubbish in there, kind of gritty, oily stuff, so that needs a good clean. I find it a bit odd that there is uh, orange paint on those push rods. I don't quite know how they uh, painted the engine and uh, got the push rods orange. Okay, so we're going to test the compression of the engine with this uh, compression tester. This is a US General one from uh, Harbor Freight. 
you connect it to each spark plug hole and measure the compression by, by cranking over the engine. Now obviously the engine is not in the car right now, so we're just going to test it by connecting the engine to a battery, turning the engine over briefly to get a compression reading for each cylinder. What we should be looking for is around about 150 psi, plus or minus 10 percent, from each cylinder. And it's actually more important for the compression readings to be consistent across all four cylinders. We know the oil pressure is good in the engine at 60 psi, so if the compression is good, the oil pressure is good, there's going to be no need to take that bottom end apart. That's my plan. Okay, so when I first did this, I got some uh, strange readings. I got 120 on cylinder 1, 140 on 2, 145 on 3, and 147 on 4. So I was a bit concerned about cylinder 1. So what I did was I checked the valve clearances. Now with a four-cylinder engine, you can test the valve clearances and check them by using what's called the rule of nine. Now under the rule of nine, the valves are numbered 1 to 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. The valves are here. Uh, and here are the push rods on this side. This is where you adjust uh, each, each valve clearance with this lock nut and a screwdriver. So the way to adjust it is, um, if I want to adjust number one, I need to make sure that number valve number eight is open. And to make sure it's open, I have to turn the crankshaft until this gets depressed all the way down, indicating the valve is open. Then I can adjust number one. I've done that for some already. There we are, number two. Number two is all the way down, so we're going to adjust number seven, which is this one. Okay. So we'll pop the feeler gauge in. It does feel pretty loose. Now we're going to undo the lock nut. Screw this down until it grips. Oops, with the screwdriver. Until it grips the feeler gauge. There we are. That's pretty tight. Now we're going to back that off until it's just. There we are. That's about right. So we can just about move the feeler gauge. In this case, the clearance is twelve thousandths of an inch. So I'm happy with that. Now we'll tighten up the lock nut. And that's still good. Okay. Final one is uh, number eight. And for number eight to be adjusted, I need to have number one all the way down. That is the rule of nine. Okay. I've done all of them now, but I'm gonna turn the crankshaft a few revolutions. Check it. So when I rechecked the compression after doing the valve clearances, I did get some good readings. Got 150 on one, 145 on the others. Those numbers are within 10%. So I'm concluding the compression's pretty good, and we can move on. Mm -hmm.